And just like that, the recession is over. <laughs> no worries. One day bounce to the upside. ES and Dow go up. Recession is over. Just kidding. I love you guys. Happy Monday. I hope you guys had an amazing weekend. Uh, welcome to the greatest investing show on earth. A show that you guys made incredibly popular across the world. Market Mondays. I'm here to make investing easy for you. So a lot of you have asked um, historically, like, what's the origin of Red Panda? And the real answer is red, as illustrated by my baby, Xander Hay. Uh, unanimously means the market is down and, and Panda is a version of a bear. And in these down markets, this is where we tend to do the best. So while everyone else is panicking, I always say the Red Panda, our season are these catastrophic downslides, these recessions, these deep pullbacks. This is when we are going to do our best. So when we were at the JP Morgan event this weekend, and thank you to everyone who attended. I appreciate you all so much. Um, I had a blast. Um, I was leaving a long telegram note to the group, and my wise seven-year-old gave me some poignant advice, and he was like, Dad, talk less if they don't listen. I said, wow, that's really like profound <laughs> from a seven-year-old, right? Um, and sometimes we can try and give too much or, you know, even in my case, show our intellectual aptitude too much to convince someone what to do. But often, the more knowledge that we have, the less we tend to do and execute. So I want you to start and chat and say and write I don't need more information I just need to fearlessly execute we can go look at every recession 29 33 the ones in the 70s late oh excuse me mid 90s 99 2000 if you look and hold over a 10-year period Man, there isn't a period of time if you hold for 10 to 20 years, if you hold a top five index or a top five company that you will be down. But when you're in the thick of it, as many of us are, as some of you are, or if this is your first time investing into a recession, it feels like you're going 90 miles an hour on a highway with no brakes and no seatbelt. And I do want to tell you, it does get easier. Lesson number one, please write this down. Inflation is the ultimate lever. Interest rates, we are now seeing, and we've talked about it before, we talked about it in season one of Market Mondays, how important quantitative easing was, right? But inflation really dictates, or interest rates, I should say, really dictates how the market is going to move. And I told you, in every investment strategy, you have to know what is the strength and weakness of that strategy? And I told everyone at Red Panda last year, I'm like, at what percentage rate does the two tech, two index strategy begin to deteriorate? And the answer was 15% interest rate, right? So you have to know the pros and cons of everything that you're going to invest in. And what seasons work incredibly well for that strategy that you have. But the number one thing that ends up affecting the market is what is the current interest rate of the environment that we are in. So if we look, 1% change in those interest rates usually changes the multiple of between 15 to 20%. And the actual Fed rate should be around like 2.3 to 3%. So when we had 10 years, 8 years of 0% interest, there was no way that was sustainable for a long period of time, especially if you read Ray Dalio's book, right? But now we just we are just getting back to normal conditions. And I told you guys last year, and even earlier this year in January, they are letting the NFT market, the crypto market, the real estate market, the used car market, all accelerate so people can have every opportunity and edge currently possible to make money so when the market goes back to normal they can say hey we did everything that we could we printed all of this money we gave stimulus checks we allowed a low interest rate environment and now 
only the true investors are going to do well in this market. The consumer confidence is at its lowest point in 10 years, but I'm going to be very honest with you. You should be most elated and excited to invest now. I know the axiom of be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. It sounds good until you actually get into an environment in which there's a lot of fear. But I will tell you, this does get easy. Please write this down. Two tech, two index, no stress. Here's the great thing about an index fund. Imagine if I told you I'm going to put you in two investments and regardless of what the market does, some of the brightest people on earth are going to recalibrate it based on that environment. And you didn't have to do anything or pay anything more for it. It like automatically adjusted for you with algorithms and technology. You're like, man, that's amazing. But because they don't have a sexier name, some people tend to run away from them. But when you have, and now some of you are going to see the growth stocks that were in some indexes or ETFs are now going to get knocked off and they're going to get replaced with the companies that are more sustainable. Elon Musk says that we're going to be in a recession for a year to 18 months. And I've told you this since October of last year. This is absolutely true. And we are going to hit a recession. Please put in chat the best time to invest into the market for the long term is during a recession. It was not when stocks were at their all time highs and you're buying one dollar off of the high. Now is the best time. Hold for a 10 year period minimum ideally i want you to hold for 30 and later tonight i know some of you are like hey i need cash flow now but when you try to trade first opposed to investing when the trading doesn't go well you don't have a backup plan or anything to fall upon to provide you security for some of you that started in 2020 you had an absolutely amazing time and got into the great time. And even though this market is sliding now, you're still riding off the gains of 2020, let alone for those of us that began investing in 2008 or nine, or some of you that began investing in 2014. So I have to start tonight by saying, please focus on the long term first, because the job of our money is to have our capital work for us and us not to work for it. Let me record my brother slamming the door hard. <laughs> you want to <laughs> tell him your game in China real quick? Um, so remember when everyone was like, Warren Buffett has lost it and he no longer has the, his edge of the market. Well, it looks like his portfolio is doing pretty damn well. Um, so let's walk through the companies that he currently owns the biggest shares of for his portfolio. Number one, Apple, my baby. We've talked about this one ad nauseum. Great. Apple is absolutely amazing. Let's go to Bank of America. Pretty solid company, but definitely during times of a recession, and especially if the interest rate environment is a little bit higher, the top two or three banks are really good investments to make. And I'll tell you about a special bank that he's invested in that you guys are pretty familiar with that you've heard us talk about a lot as well. Uh, number three in this portfolio is American Express. So it's at 159 and some change right now in 2020. It got down to 67 bucks. And the reason why American Express hasn't dropped a lot is because of the type of customer base that they have. Do I like them long term? Yes. Do I still like Visa? Yes. Um, but if I had to pick during a recession like environment, the kind we're in now, I would definitely lean on American Express. Next, Coca Cola. You would be surprised. And I know some people are going to be like, it's not healthy. He's selling diabetes. Dr. Sebi wouldn't agree. I know. I know. I know. We haven't found a way <laughs> yet to get CBOS publicly traded, right? But if we look at the overall value of Coca-Cola this year, it hasn't really fallen that much. The high was 67 is currently at $62.86. Barely has had any drawdown. Sometimes the stocks that are safest are usually the most boring. But put in chat, we are here for safety and consistent gains over sensationalism, right? Let's go to Moody's, one that I gave you guys a few years ago. Moody's has fallen down some. I do like Moody's if it gets to 200 bucks or like 201. 
that is the area I would be pretty, pretty confident in for sure. And if, for those of you that are using technicals, if you use a 200 day moving average, that'll give you a good price to be able to get in as well. Let's get USB, US Bank Corp. So it went from 63 down to 50. We're at 50.75 right now. Not the biggest drop, not the biggest gainers, but it, it does give you a little bit of safety. So when you're in a recession, you want stocks that are not going to bleed down a lot. So if you look at VOO, VOO went from 411 to 364, not that bad. Like if you look in comparison to, let's pick on Peloton. I love you guys. Peloton went from 171 down to currently at $13.62. We never want to see a chart look like this. That's in our portfolio, right? Back to Buffett's portfolio, Verizon. It's been falling down. This one I don't like. So my rule, if it has not made a high within the last year, I don't want to touch it. Verizon last high was 2019. No, I don't like that one. Now, if he's been in it for years, I totally understand why he's holding it. But I personally would not touch that one and or add it. Uh, Boyd Gaming, not bad. 72 bucks. It's at 54.75 right now. Let's look at CVX, Chevron. Chevron is doing incredibly well. And I, I want you guys to go do the research tonight, especially for those of you in Red Panda. How much does energy stocks on average tend to go up when we have a recession? The energy sector has done incredibly well. And I would look for oil-based company. I wouldn't first, then I would go natural gas. I would lean very heavy on oil. Um, these companies have done incredibly well, but if you look, Chevron at the start of the year was at 116, is now at 171. It is moving up like tech stocks did last year. And I said before last week, before the technology sector took over, energy was the tech industry for a long period of time. So I'm not surprised. And also, anytime that the energy market has doubled in one year, it usually leads to a recession. So please. Be mindful of that. And of course, our beloved ally. Um, the high was at 56.61. It's at 40.39. Like Troy said, the last couple of weeks, they've been advertising like crazy. Treat their customer base very well. And the very interesting part is they have not drawn down a lot. There's a lot of upside here in ally. Um, and I'm not just saying that because they're sponsored sponsor the show. I love, I only endorse things that I actually love, have used, and, and that are dear to my heart. So Apple Bank of America, um, American Express, Coca-Cola, Moody's, uh, Boyd Gaming, Chevron, and Ally are a couple stocks out of Warren's portfolio that I love. Which of these would you personally add to your portfolio? And for those of you that have been following the plan with futures and who intended InvestFest, please get your tickets because trust me, the segment that we have lined up when I hop on stage, the entire weekend is going to be great. Um, you guys are going to be, I wish I can say the lineup. I do. I <laughs> not Troy, Rashad, I'm not. Mike, I'm not. Jamal, I'm not. Bam, I'm not, but I want to. Um, blockbuster, for sure. Um, but for those of you who remember the targets from last year at InvestFest, which have worked incredibly well, especially to the downside, right? I'm proud of you guys. So if you would have traded 15 contracts recently, and let's say you got 800 ticks or 800 points on the Dow or NASDAQ, that would have been $60,000 in one trade. And for those of you that were able to hit Dow and NASDAQ, 120 growths, is it not worth it to be able, or is it not worth it to take the time to practice for six months eight months to now be able to hit that kind of target in this market when everyone else is panicking and this generation this era for whatever reason people do not want to take the slow path to greatness you cannot rush greatness no matter how much you try and speed it up the process is a process but for those of you who have actually went through your 300 trades and you were incredibly disciplined and you followed direction i'm proud of you if you have not been disciplined, this is the time now that you can say, I'm never going to be in this situation again. For me in 2008, when I missed out on all of that money, because I too wanted one big win. And there is no such thing as one big win. But I wanted it. 
And when I missed my opportunity, I said, man, never again in life will these moves, recessions, breakdowns happen, and I don't know what to do. Some of you want exceptional, world-changing results and gains from having mediocre or subpar skill sets. And life doesn't work that way. Trust me, I tried to find every shortcut, every hack, every tool, system, anything to give me an edge so I can just one home run. Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. The more you practice properly, the more profit you'll end up having. Please put that in chat. The more practice you have properly, the more profit you'll end up having. Let's look, take a look at a couple things in a second, but I do want to say this. Um, in a previous video that I sent to Stock Club, um, I asked at the end of the first year of Market Mondays, like, hey, what could I have done better to make you guys or induce you guys to actually invest? And a couple of you gave some great suggestions. You know, why not have people share their portfolio every week and um, contests and quizzes and all of that. But the truth is, there's nothing I can do to make you invest. I truly believe this is the greatest investing show ever created. I don't know any other that has been able to guide you through stocks, what to avoid, tell you about UFOs <laughs> and pterodactyls, right? And tell you the prices to get in and they actually hit and work, right? But if you don't feel that you're worthy, and that's why at every event, I always start with, I deserve to be happy. I deserve to be wealthy. I deserve to be rich. I deserve to be free. You have to believe that first before any actions are taken. I was sharing this with um, Christy earlier, and I was like, hey, I know sometimes when we get into a zone, we often like want to chase that high of that achievement, but most success should feel boring if you do it consistently enough. And the thing that causes a lot of anxiety for entrepreneurs and investors alike is that you don't have a plan. When I met with some of you in LA, I, I told you guys, I'm like, you guys can, at this point, write Market Mondays for me, especially the long-term investing thesis of 2 Tech 2 Index, right? But the anxiety comes from not having a plan, not sticking to it. And the reason why most people don't is because they truly don't believe that they're worthy. How many of you actually believe that you are worthy of five, 10, 15 million dollars per month? One hundred million dollars in a year, two point nine billion in your lifetime, fifteen point eight, thirty two point six billion for your family for the next two or three generations. T. Harv Ecker has an interesting quote. Your inner, your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. Your outer world is a reflection of your inner world, and that's so true. And the more work we do on the inside is what allows us to have the consistency, the preparation, and then the execution on the outside to make these dreams come true. So I'm begging you, make a plan and stick to it because you're worthy of it. And some of you have all the information you've ever needed in the market, but the only thing that is stopping you from getting you to where you want to be is healing some of the childhood or early teenage traumas of you being told that you're not worthy. And now we're going to see a whole bunch of layoffs. So like Klarna is laying off 10% of his workforce. Netflix laid off 150 employees. And let's say they they on average made like 110000 a year. That's $16.5 million to save. And you cannot save your way out of devastation. So whenever companies go to cost-cutting measures, to try and save a company, it's usually a sign of overspending. That, but that $16.5 million, even on an annual basis, won't give them the edge they need when they have a pricing and a debt problem. Earlier today, somebody asked me, hey, Trap said Apple can go to 111. What do you think? And I'm like, I got 110.38 <laughs> mapped off as a worst case scenario. So I know it feels like during a recession, you may have to keep averaging down, but didn't everyone want better prices? So if you're consistently focused, and I know everyone ideally wants to buy a company, let's take Apple, at 72 bucks, 
That is your average cost. You buy in one time and from there it goes to 700 and you look like a genius and you put in 200,000 and you never have to touch anything again. It doesn't look like that in real life. If you bought a quality company, if it continues to dip with great leadership, great fundamentals, a great moat, and they have indestructible forces around it that are stronger than a moat, you shouldn't care if the stock drops 25, 30, 45%. That only gives you trouble if you feel that the business that you bought into was not that good. And let's look at the bond market real quick because this is really interesting. If we look here, the bond market is barely above, barely above. It's 50% mark. So from five years, 10 years, the bond market since 2020 has come down and has been cut in half. And when we begin to see an uptick in the bond market, and hold on, let's even look at 10 years. So if we, if we look at 10 years, we're really at... 2013, 2014, and 2018 levels. That's how you know that the market that we were in was not a real market. It was overinflated once again. It was like Major League Baseball when steroids is going on. And this is what I always tell you. Any market that is going up really fast is going to have a fall that is incredibly sharp and volatile to the downside. So when you go through Money Master the Game, shout out to Jerry, and they're like, hey, it was a precipitous de decline in the market. This is what they're talking about. But what will give you an edge to know if this can happen is, store, is studying these charts historically. So the further out that you go, that will actually give you your edge in the market to know if this could happen again. But please stop buying at a high. So if a market is up here, Let's say at 191 and the all time high is one. But the, the high is 191.22 and it's at 191. You do not want to buy in this area. Leave it alone. Wait for it to pull back some. And literally, if you would have waited to that 50% mark, you would have had a little bit of a drawdown and then you would have saw the market start to go back up in your favor as a result. Please be patient. Right in chat. I will be patient for every investment that I make, even if I love it dearly. And the biggest lesson from this weekend um, that I wanted to share, once again, I want to share with parents exclusively. With your kids, take five minutes every Friday to talk to them about investing. You do not have to read them a filing report. You do not need to watch CNBC with them for 25 minutes. Five minutes. Apple, computer company. McDonald's food company, Target store, Amazon store. That's how I taught Xander. When I too tried to be a super professor to Xander, he would look at me like, what are you talking about? And the simpler we make it, the better. And the second biggest lesson um, I want to share, like for those of you who are young in your early 20s, 20 to 29, right? You have an edge that, that even those of my generation do not have. You have more data, more information, incredibly fearless, and you grew up on technology. So kudos to the brother. I have him on the show one day um, here very soon, I hope. But I had a chance to meet a brother who came to the event, and he was like, off your advice, I went from having, I'll let him tell a story. But he started with less than $20,000 in 2020 and eventually became a millionaire in two years off of the advice that he got just from watching market Mondays. <laughs> like, that's amazing. That like, that's why I tell you sometimes the thing that stops us from getting to our goal, the only thing that block that is blocking us is us. And to hear what he invested in, um, even caught some of the, you know, the prices of Doge and wrote that up and then wrote it into his business and took that advice. Like nothing is going to stop you, but you. You truly deserve this. I've talked about a bunch of stocks and I'm going to review probably 50 before we wrap up, but I want to show you a couple of things that I look at that I've never talked about before that gives me a gauge on where we are in the market. So if you look here, this chart represents the unemployment rate for the County of San Francisco. So you can see, let me scoot this over for you. 
So you can see the low was here in 2019. And then 2020, COVID happened, there was a change. Back to the EMA, right? So once I saw we were back underneath the, the EMA, things were going to stabilize. So the cities that I normally look at to get a gauge, LA, write these down, San Francisco, Houston, New York, the Mecca, right? <laughs> and Miami. So if all those have pretty good employment rates, I then begin to say, okay, great. The market is going to stabilize. When we get to these top levels, same thing with report, support and resistance. And let me go back a little bit further. So if I go here and I'll just do a quick channel, top to bottom. Whenever it breaks out of these zones, so I did here in 2020, so it broke these highs, I knew a change was going to come. And if you look city by city, you can begin to see that when these highs are here, there's going to be a change. And just like when, it, when we get to a low, at some point, employment is going to go to the other side. So that's another way you can look at the market and see, hey, overall, if the employment is too low, at some point, there's going to be a wrench thrown into the system that throws it off. And that may give me an opportunity in the market to be able to see when there is a good time to buy. And what's one of the biggest industries in San Fran and San Francisco County. Please put it in chat. This one here is consumer price index for all urban consumers. So in all items in the United States, this is the average. So the average right now is at a high, all time high, 289.11. So if I go, let's go max available and I look month by month. The CPI has increased. And if you go back and look historically, you can go back to 1913 and 1915. So when I say study a market, know the highs and lows of every market to know if so if CPI continues to go up, what effect does that have on a market quiz time? Please put that in chat. This one here is the real gross domestic product. So another quiz question, what is the gross domestic product? represent so right now you can see in 2020 of course i fell down and now we're back close to a high that we were sliding down a little bit but if you go let's go out 20 years and if you study that you can see 2008 we had a dip so even on these lines for me any of these dips if i wanted to use this indicator alone i will buy on these when they were red top five companies sometimes we make it so complicated on how to invest it's like no just invest consistently so even if we would have invested here 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 these two here 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 our average entry would have been like sub eighteen thousand. we would have been okay the biggest mistake that we make is not investing and looking at too many damn indicators to decide when to get into the market. And as we get close to wrapping up, I know some of you may have not liked my takes on uh, crypto, but the takes are correct. <laughs> I, I can't wait till Satoshi comes out of hiding and he tells you guys the truth. Uh, Tether will be next. And I, I understand that just because, uh, but, but look, stop moving the goalposts on me. I'll say that because last year it was no, the banks don't have majority control of the price or controlling interest or they're not heavily invested because the banks are the competitors now it's like well we're talking about the blockchain technology da, da, da. listen i won't say anything i'm gonna just let everybody in red panda run it up that's what i'm gonna do but i will say for those of you that are anti-crypto and i'm not saying this to play to the crypto audience once again for all my financial content creators one of the biggest mistakes you can make is to attack an asset class because the people feel that you're attacking them once again i was in crypto early got caught up in mount gox was in 2013 kudos to Matt slit who told me about it who was an employee at facebook i was in before most people of my hue or my hubris even knew about bitcoin right um and I still think once everything clears, Ripple is going to be great. Um, so I'll say that. But one of the biggest mistakes a person can make is shorting crypto. I know the market is falling apart, 
But if you short a stock, let's say, and you get a great trade and you maximize the trade and squeeze all of the juice out of the orange, what's the highest percentage return without margin you can earn if you short crypto? And then turn around and tell me what the five year or 10 year gain is of Bitcoin or Ethereum. Now you have to be mindful for the Terra Lunas and 2016 Litecoins, right? Because there's a lot of change in that top five guard. And please be mindful. I said it before. Once you begin to peg something to the dollar and you're trying to position that as a safe asset, you're now competing against the mutual fund industry, the Federal Reserve, and most banks that provide safety. So now, now in annuity companies, life insurance, you have a ton of competitors, right? Also, when we talked about before, when to know if a product or company is good to invest in, Go look at some of the early episodes. And if you haven't watched every episode of Market Mondays, I'm being real with you. You don't want to be rich. My graduates from my school being Forbes. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>